And don't fucking leave it. The show goes on. This is fire. They're gonna need to send in the National Guard, a fucking SWAT team, cause I ain't going nowhere. Fuck them. There's no greater irony than the same people who for four years tried to delegitimize an election result with baseless conspiracy theories, then accusing the Trump campaign of trying to delegitimize an election result with baseless conspiracy theories. You don't get to do that. You spent four years relentlessly trying to subvert the office of president. Then cry foul when the Trump campaign demands a legally transparent vote count. You don't get to do that. You know what the mainstream media also doesn't get to do? Decide elections. The role of declaring the winner of a presidential election in the US falls to the news media. No, it fucking doesn't. Oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. All the networks, we have to forget about the law. Judges don't count. All the networks, all the networks, all the networks thought Biden was gonna win by 10%. Gee, what happened? But it's not like they didn't tell you what they were going to do in advance. And you have a model scenario called the Red Mirage. What does that mean? On election night, we are going to see Donald Trump in a stronger position. The data is going to show on election night an incredible victory for Donald Trump. When every legitimate vote is tallied and we get to that final day, which will be someday after election day, it will in fact show that what happened on election night was exactly that, a mirage. It looked like Donald Trump was in the lead. And he fundamentally was not when every ballot it gets counted. Biden got fewer votes than Obama or Hillary in every state except Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Wisconsin. Hmm, funny that, isn't it? Seems about as normal as a 77-year-old man sniffing a random six-year-old girl's hair. Don't tell me what you have to. Totally normal. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Google Trends searches for election fraud punishment surged in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona before election. What a stunning coincidence. I wonder why that could possibly be. Numbers of people who voted only for Joe Biden and didn't vote further down the ticket. Pennsylvania, 98,000. Georgia, 80 to 90,000. Arizona, 42,000. Michigan, 69 to 115,000. Wisconsin, 62,836. Seems legit. We've identified at least 450,000 ballots in the key states that miraculously only have a mark for Joe Biden on them and no other candidate. Still, at least Republican poll watchers were allowed to observe them all being counted. Oh. Still, at least we're allowed to talk about this. At least social media companies didn't implement policies months before anticipating this very scenario so they could then censor whistleblowers. Uh, oh. Look, it's time to just accept that Biden won fair and square. His voters were way more committed to the cause. In some cases, going so far as returning from the dead to vote for him. You've got to give it up for that kind of enthusiasm. If Republicans are consistently unable to capture that key demographic, dead people, then they only have themselves to blame. <laughs> Joe Biden outthanking voters. But seriously, are the courts going to save Trump? If you believe the system stole the election from him, then it's pretty naive that that same system is just going to hand it back. So let's say Trump fails in court and Biden wins. I don't fucking leave it! Let's say all those 4 a.m. magic ballots were totally legitimate. Who's to blame? The media. No, not the legacy media the conservative media. Trump was basically the first president in history to run a campaign with barely any right-wing media outlets fighting his corner. The Drudge Report abandoned Trump and became indistinguishable from CNN. Fox News was so eager to call states early for Biden, they were like a giddy child waiting to open his gifts at 6 a.m. on Christmas Day. Only Ben Shapiro threw in the towel quicker. Articles like this one in The Spectator expressing the sentiment of so-called conservatives who voted for Biden 
because they wanted some kind of return to normality. I'm voting to make America boring again. You think things are going to be boring? You think you can sue for peace? You think they're just going to let you get on with your lives? You think everything's going to return to normal? Nationwide mask mandates, medical, martial law. Is that normal? Returning to the fantastic policy of carpet bombing the Middle East to install Islamist dictators. Is that normal? Critical race theory brainwashing, Marxist re-education and social engineering of a generation. Is that normal? Handing political capital and influence to the same thugs who've been burning down American cities for the past six months. Is that normal? Just because you cooked for Biden, you don't think they're going to demand more? <laughs> Oh, but at least we won't have to defend Trump's impulsive tweets. What kind of putridly pathetic cowardice is that? Oh, but under Biden, the country will be brought back together. He's going to heal and unify the nation. A nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed. Putting Republicans on lists. Demanding, quote, pain for Trump supporters. Saying Trump supporters who want a fair vote count should be barred from future employment. Threatening to burn down and level the opposition, leaving no survivors. It's not only that Trump has to lose, but that all his enablers have to lose. They have to, we have to collectively, in essence, burn down the Republican Party. Um, we have to level them, because if there are survivors, if there are people who weather this storm, they will do it again. Yeah, that doesn't sound like healing rhetoric to me. We get enough power in the media, and I'm going to steamroll these sons of I'm gonna steamroll them. We're gonna slaughter the Republicans politically. Let us hit the Republicans in the face. 2016, Trump won. He's going to execute all gay and trans people and become a fascist. 2020, punish those who disagree with me and participate in democracy. <laughs> Unity. You really think these kind of people are just going to let you be? They're already back out on the streets harassing diners. This isn't just about seizing power, it's about demoralizing a nation. Many conservatives are now saying they'll never bother voting again after what happened. It's about making you feel powerless, disenfranchised, hopeless. And suddenly, COVID's taken a few days off so they can all have street parties. You don't get to attend your grandma's funeral because it's too dangerous. You get screeched at if you get within six feet of them. But they can all gather in close proximity for a super spreader event and the media affords the endless adulation. And what are they celebrating? The end of Trumpism, the end of populism, the end of America first nationalism. Newsflash. None of that's going anywhere, whether Trump's in the White House or not. Three million more Americans legitimately voted for it than in 2016. Hardly a blue wave, is it? Hardly a repudiation. Also, speaking of celebrations, the same media that we're supposed to trust with the power to anoint a president claimed that 5th of November fireworks in the UK, an annual celebration, was actually people celebrating Biden winning. Hey Siri, what's bonfire night? CNN also lied in claiming church bells rang out in Paris in praise of Biden. The church released a statement saying otherwise. Deliberately fake news designed to bolster Biden's legitimacy. Now suddenly, less than a week after the election, we have a COVID vaccine. Another stunningly timed coincidence. Now Biden has his coronavirus task force. Now he can take credit for saving the world from the pandemic. Such perfect timing. Did the Trump campaign make mistakes? Without a doubt. Pandering to Israel. For all his pro-Israel stuff, more Muslims than Jews voted for Trump. Pandering to minorities. So Trump got an extra 2% of the black vote compared to 2016. This is continually lauded by MAGA types who are still obsessed with not having the media call them racist. And at what cost? Democrats still got 90% of the black vote. Trump the racist won more minority votes than any GOP candidate since 1960. Yeah, but if it turns out he's still lost, so what? We may have lost the White House, but at least the media can't call us racists. Who cares? How much energy did pro-Trump organizations waste in desperately trying to prove they weren't racist instead of using that energy to enlist actual voters? They hate you. They're going to call you racist anyway. Who cares? Whatever happens in the next few weeks, I think one thing's for certain. There are going to be quite a few more plot twists before this thing is said and done. More actual evidence of election interference is going to be unearthed in one month 
than in years of the Russia hysteria investigations. The media has spent four years fact-checking the president. Well, now it's time to fact-check the vote. The show goes on. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.